20 years. And here's my question to you. You're all for local energy, and I am too. But what about knowing what's in the chemicals for fracking? And what, and what about blowing the tops of mountains off to get the coal? Can you do, or will you do, anything about these two items? Yeah, and, and I believe that actually decisions on fracking ought to be regulated at the state level. Uh, disclosure ought to be regulated at the state level. And in the past couple of days, there have been reports in both the Denver Post and some other local media outlets that talked about a plan at the state legislature to disclose, require disclosure of uh, what's in a fracking fluid. And so I think that's going to happen at the state level. And I don't know if you heard John Hickenlooper say, uh, John Hickenlooper basically said there's no way that it, uh, it will, the chemicals that are in fracking fluid would contaminate water. That's what John Hickenlooper said. That's in the paper, so you can, you can read it in the paper. I'm not making that up. So you can read John Hickenlooper. Yeah. And the second part on mountaintop mining, in Colorado, we don't, we don't do mountaintop mining. So. Yes, we yeah. Call me Corey, please. <laughs> or whatever other choice word. No, well, I just wanted to know, um, I don't know about in D.C. and Congress, but I hear this great sucking sound that Ross Rumpro used to talk about. I work for a company that has 90,000 employees, and every year that shrinks to being a smaller amount of Americans who get laid off and more overseas. Right now, I need to be trained to learn some new technology, and they're training people in Vietnam. And I'm really scared, and I want to know what you're going to do to keep, uh, so that I can keep paying Colorado taxes rather than become a ward of your state. Thank you. Well, that's, that goes back to a pretty fundamental uh, thing. We need more taxpayers in this country, not higher taxes in this country. And by helping people create jobs and opportunities, we will make sure that we, we achieve what you want. That's, and that's, so, so what can we do about it? We can, we can make sure that we have regulations that promote local business. Yeah, I got a phone call from a, uh, from a businessman in Denver, and he said his number one competitor just went overseas to take, to take advantage of some of the, the lower taxes that they had overseas. And so, so he, what? Hang on, hang on, hang on. And there may have been another reason why he did that. But the fact of the matter is, he was left in with a choice. Does he go over there, or does he stay here knowing that he can no longer compete? And so how do we create an, a, a business environment? We, we need to create a business environment that actually starts creating American jobs. We do it with energy. The Jobs and Energy Permitting Act would create 54,000 jobs, high-paying jobs right here in this country. Well, then we need to make sure that your business is successful. We need to make sure that we're... Training those Well, and then, and then the great, the, what's great about our country... company can succeed, then I would hope that they would share with their, their success with you. If they are not, if they're not, maybe that's not a great company to work for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody pops up. A good citizen across the hall, why are you exporting American jobs and then turn around and give these companies a tax credit for it? Right. ideas on the bills, the list of bills that you see, to create American jobs, to make sure that we are creating those jobs right here. The question was the tax credit, Mr. Gardner. Well, there's a, if there's a, I, I, I'd have to look at what tax credit you're talking about, so happy to get the information to some folks in the back, so thank you. Ed. Corey, thank you. Uh, the IRS reported in 2008 that the top 5% of income earners paid 59% of the tax. The bottom 50% paid 2.7 of the collected income tax. It's not a tax problem, it's a spending problem. I salute you for staying constitutional and with the majority of people who've sent you to Washington to keep 
your finger on the spending. One other thing, if we want more jobs in America, all we got to do is reduce the corporate income tax rate. <laughs> <laughs> And when people present these different Did you just ideas, say that? <laughs> when people present these different ideas, sometimes the same thing happens in Congress. <laughs> yes. Hi, I'm Dolores Williams. Thank you for coming and listening to us. Fifty thousand factories went overseas uh, during the Bush administration, and they were given tax credits to move. You know, it's a business expense to go over there. 50,000 factories went overseas, and we've got to bring them back. Small businesses have not been able to keep up. So we need tariffs. We need to stop. When we have federal money to spend, please, it's got to be spent here, and, and that will require factories to come he back here because we can't buy China, etc. The only way to get factories back here are for the federal government to have a rule that you cannot buy and take our money overseas. Thank you. What will you do about it? Sure. Yeah, and, and I, I just, I believe in the free market. And that, that if you increase tariffs, if you increase tariffs, then it will have negative effects on any other number of goods in the market. Uh, if you look at some of the actions that Russia, China, other nations have taken, uh, whether it's a, you know, a tariff on uh, some products, uh, there's been many trade issues that a tariff was placed on one product and something completely unrelated to it as a retaliation law, tariffs were placed on the other products by the other nation. And so I, I think that the way we help consumers in this country is by having choice and making sure that we have a, a number of opportunities to, to, to go out and seek those goods that we want for ourselves or our families. And that means that we have to rely on a free market. Now, the other thing that I think we've got to do is to make sure that our business environment in this country is conducive to creating jobs. Because we can't dictate to a, you know, there's $2 trillion worth of capital that's sitting on the bankrolls of businesses around this country right now. And it's sitting there, and they're not investing it in this country creating jobs. Why? Because they don't know what's going to happen here with the policies of this nation over the next several years. And so they're holding on to that money and they're not spending it. And so how can we make sure that our, our regulatory environment, our energy policies are such that they say, you know what, let's do business here. Because I believe, as you believe, this is the best country on the face of this earth. And when we can make it happen for them, they'll create those jobs here. They won't go overseas. Yes, sir.